Give me your strength and show me your weakness We're in this together now We're in this together now Give me your love and tell me your secrets Cause we're in this together now Yeah, we're in this together now a while since I've been on. I think it's been around um, four or five weeks, I think. Let me know how the audio is, um, because I've uh, changed my setup again. I've got all new stuff happening. Uh, so let me know if the audio and the picture quality is okay. Uh, I think it's all right. Uh, everything seems to be uh, working fine. I am using this Sony a7S III and the 24mm GM here. Um, so let me know if everything's all right from that aspect. Um, and uh, obviously this is earlier than usual, um, but with daylight savings and everything all over the place, uh, like you've changed, I've ch we've changed, we're right in the heart of winter now, so <laughs> I'm going to have a water because it's only 9 o'clock in the morning here, so it's pretty early. Uh, I'm just going to crack this. Mm. Audio is good. Thanks, uh, Alien Drone. So, yeah, I'm not sure how many will pop in live this morning. I didn't even have time, actually, to... Um, put a notification in 
Uh, also, there's I've been hacked on Facebook, which I'm going to put a separate video about. It's been an absolute nightmare. It's still not fixed. I have um, created a new account, though, David Osler. Uh, the person that hacked me uh, actually did um, delete my page completely. Luckily, the videography school is still working, um, but... Uh, he is an administrator there and I can't contact Facebook. I'll, I'll talk about this in a separate video because I don't want to do this today in today's Sony Alpha rumour show. But just to let you know that I have been hacked and that's sort of, <laughs> it's been going crazy. So look at my hat, it's all a bit weird. I love this old hat. It's got to go up that side. Oh yeah, God. Um, so... Yeah, so that's what's happened in my Facebook world. Luckily, YouTube hasn't been hacked and Instagram hasn't been hacked and my Osler Images Facebook page wasn't hacked, but my David Osler account was. Uh, and obviously I was a moderator or the admin on the photography videography school. Luckily, Kerry is as well, my wife. Um, but uh, this Robert, <laughs> what was his name? Robert, um, Robert Downey Jr. is the... Um, person that hacked me. Obviously, I don't think it's the real Robert Downey Jr., but, you know, who knows. But anyway, it's uh, been fun and games and an absolute nightmare dealing with Facebook, and I'm going to talk about that in a separate video. So let's see who's here anyway, because I'm just curious to see who's here, because uh, I'm not sure, like I said, I haven't been on for so long. Uh, people, I haven't been able to sort of put the post out to say that I'm going to be on live, so um, that's me. <laughs> Roger just said, hi. Um, Trevor said early stream. Yes, it is an early stream today. I thought I'd pop them early. Usually I do it on the Saturdays. That's the, well, it is your Saturday in the US and stuff, but um, usually I do it on the Saturday here, uh, but I was busy yesterday, so I just put a note on Facebook, uh, on YouTube to say that I'd be doing it today. Uh, hopefully now I can come back and do the weekly streams again. Um, so nice to see you here, Trev. Uh, Alien Drone said hello from sunny Oregon. David, 4.04 p.m. here. So it might be a bit early too for a lot of the uh, US uh, viewers too. Boy, you can hear that air conditioner. It's quite cold this morning. What are we on? We're on seven degrees Celsius. Whew. It's freezing. A lot colder than what you guys in Europe and the US are suffering at the moment. Uh, I reckon bring it on. <laughs> but I love the heat. I'm one of the few that say bring on the El Nino because I just love heat. Uh, it doesn't matter to me if it's 45 degrees Celsius. Uh, I love it. So... Um, I'm jealous of you guys getting the heat over there, or some of you are probably saying you, you don't like it, but um, I love it. Um, so it is only 404 over there, yeah, so it probably is a little bit early. Julian also said, just picked up the Viltrox 16mm 1.8. Um, Edifor, is it that for the pri uh, good price, I think you're saying? The, the Viltrox make great lenses. They really do make great lenses. Uh, that's a really good choice. Um... Oh, you've changed it. You said it just picked up the Viltrox 16mm 1.8. Nice and wide for the price. Uh, his first one was um, the wrong uh, thing said. Uh, Alien Drone said, good audio. Julian is also here as well. G'day, Julian. Roger said, audio and video is fine, so that's good. Good to see that everything's working there. Um, Stuart said, did you just get out of jail, mate? <laughs> Oh no, like I said, I've been away for, for a fair while, but look, I've been really busy. Um, I've been had quite a few uh, weddings, which is unusual for this time of the year. So I did have uh, a few weddings and things like that that I've been going on with. Um, so I've actually been really busy over the last few weeks, so I just haven't been able to get back on. But now, look, we're right in the heart of winter now. I think I've got a wedding next month uh, in August, which is, again is unusual because it's cold here. Um, I mean, it's not cold compared to European standards, but, uh, you know, it's cool. Um, but uh, then I haven't got a wedding again until, I think, September, October. It starts to pick up again at the end of the year. But remember, I'm retiring from weddings at the end of this year um, due to the fact that Kerry and myself are going to buy a motorhome and we're going to travel around Australia. Um, and I'm going to be doing vlogging and also workshops and also do some... Um, filming and all that sort of stuff. So it's going to be really exciting for you guys because you're going to have a complete new change of the channel. So uh, you're going to be seeing the whole of Australia with me and also, you know, I'll be shooting landscapes and doing all these other things too that should be an awful lot of fun. Uh, so we're going to do that basically full-time for a while. 
So stay tuned for that at the end of the year. I think Kerry gets retrenched, and that's a great thing because she gets a good package. I think she's getting retrenched in uh, January or February, so it should be after that uh, when it all happens. And hopefully we can also do a quick trip. We want to go to um, the UK um, to see my auntie who lives over there, and obviously I'll have some meetups with, uh, you know, some European things that we might do over there. And also, I'm trying, I'm desperately want to go to Iceland, so we'll see what happens. Um, Julian said, uh, your room's looking Batman set up in the cave. It does a bit look like that, doesn't it? Funny thing is, you know, there's a little bit of focus breathing or f focusing there. I didn't think the 24mm did that or the Sony A7S III, but see how it's doing it now in the background? Hmm. You can get around it because I can just put it onto uh, manual focus, but yeah, sorry about that because I just noticed it is doing that. I might put it on a manual focus next time. The only thing is, if I want to sort of bring something up to show it, uh, is that going to focus? Why isn't that focusing? Oh, hang on, I know why. I think I've got it on. Oh, look at that. It's not even gaining focus. Perhaps I've got it on. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to have to check it out. Um, it does look a bit back cavey. Everyone is talking about this camera. I'm going to go through it and look, and I think it's actually a pretty good release, actually. But there's some things that bug me about it, and I'll talk to you about that as well. Remember, I'm not sponsored, so I can say anything, and that's the good part about this. So um, I'm going to talk about it from my perspective um, and see what you all think about that. So it should be an interesting discussion. Uh, Julian said, um, I use Viltrox, but I have to admit the reason is it's always a good value is they steal their IP. Oh, what does IP mean? It, um, Trevor said, it's cold and hot everywhere. Weather is uh, amorphous now. Laugh out loud. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Well, this is our normal winter weather. I mean, look, we get down to, I think today's 15. Yeah, we're getting to 15 Celsius today. I suppose that's 60s, is it? Um, I don't know what that is. I'll tell you exactly. Hang on. Let me have a look. Um, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Where are we? Oh, it's Fahrenheit to Celsius. 65. Let me try that. Yeah, we're around about 63, something like that. 63 uh, Fahrenheit. So... Just to give you an idea, I oh, know it's actually around 60, I think. Yeah, it's about 60-ish. So that's what we are today. Um, the weather actually has been pretty good. It's been 17 over the last few days, so it's been actually pretty good. I don't mind winter, though, but I do love the heat. Um, so I'm looking forward to sort of getting away from the Melbourne winters. Um, what else have we got? Stuart said, just got a Hazelbad H2 and an 82.8. Nice. Um, Paul, uh, Paul said, good to see you are still at it. Yep, certainly am, Paul. Like I said, I've been hacked on Facebook, though, which I'm going to put a separate video about. Um, Trevor said, will you miss weddings? Look, I probably will. I may still do some, but Trevor, what I might do is I might um, be very selective and put out a fairly expensive rate and then just do a couple a year. Where I'm going, the interesting thing is if I'm up north of Australia, which is very warm in the, in the uh, winter, uh, you know, that like it's probably around 90 Fahrenheit in our winter temperatures here in, up north. So a lot of people get married up there in winter. So I may be able to do some weddings while I'm traveling uh, and do that sort of thing. So I probably will maybe still do some, but I'll be very selective on what I take. Uh, I might just do some just for some extra spending money and things like that, but uh, yeah, but that's the reason I, I really am looking more forward to doing travel videos and you know doing landscapes and just say model shoots out in, in remote locations and things like that, having workshops with guys as I travel and also sharing my uh, experience with traveling in a uh, motorhome. So it's going to be really interesting, I think. Uh, hopefully, you guys will find it interesting too. Paul said, great news about your retirement and your new adventures. Looking forward to seeing the videos. Yeah, I can't wait to see it, actually. It, uh, to do it, it's going to be so much fun. Um, Julian also said, laugh out loud. All right, so let's look at these stories today because I want to take you through the Sony A6700. 
Um, and we'll have a look at that and then sort of I can give you a discussion about it. And also we'll talk about the 70 to 200 today. So I'm only going to talk about two stories today because um, my voice actually is a little bit hoarse. So I don't know whether it's because I haven't done this for so long, I might lose it. Um, so let's switch over. And we'll have a look here. By the way, can you hear the air conditioner? Um, the heater's on. Can you hear it? I'm just curious to know if it's that bad. Focus, you silly thing. I'm going to go manual focus next week, I think. All right, so Sony announced the A6700 just the other day. And it seems to be uh, uh, quite an interesting release. There's some really interesting things about it that, you know, it's now got... Talking from a, a sort of fusion type camera, which is going to be for stills and for video, um, it is pretty good because it's got a 26 megapixel sensor. It has this all uh, new AI processor that we're looking at there. Uh, it's got 6K oversam uh, oversampling uh, down to your 4K, so it, the image is going to be really uh, nice if you're dealing with your 4K footage. And you can go to 60p, 422, and it's 10 bit. Now you can shoot. 4K 120 as well, uh, which is great too, but the quality from what I've seen um, suffers just a little bit. Whereas the 4K 60 uh, 422 tempered is really good. Uh, let me just click on this for a second and just see if it just jumps down. Oh yeah, okay, we'll look at that later. Let me just bring this back up. And we'll go through... Um, oh, the uh, Trev's saying he doesn't hear the air conditioning. Oh, that's good. I can hear it through these, um, but... It's good that you can't hear it. So that's what it is, uh, and the body is very similar. We'll have a look at all these things sort of in a minute, though, to look at uh, what it actually looks like. But it is a uh, it's a new XMAR sensor. I think it's it's the same as the um, what is it, the thirty the um, FX thirty I think it's called. Uh, it's basically exactly the same sensor as that. Uh, they're just saying it's an advanced CMOS image sensor. Um, it's got 26 megapixels, so that's a decent amount, If you want, particularly if you want to crop in and things like that. It's got these new uh, Bions XR processors that are in there. Uh, There's new AI processors that I'll, I'll talk to you about in a minute. Uh, it's also saying here that the wide dynamic range, from what I've been seeing online, I think it was around about uh, 11 effective now, it probably comes up to 14 if you're measuring it, but the actual actual effective um, dynamic range was around 11, which is very, very good, actually. It's it's really good. Um, I'm just going down to... I haven't even looked at this page yet, so I'm just looking at it with you guys together. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what we look... Uh, what we sort of see through here. It's also saying choose your creative look, so it does have creative looks. Remember, these cameras too are designed for uh, the beginning shooters, even though this is the high range uh, one of the, the you know, the A6000 series, the APS-C cameras, this is the sort of uh, the top tier. It still is uh, priced at more of an introductory type camera compared to the full frame models that you get out there. So some people will be using all of these creative looks. You know, you've got black and white and there'll be things like that that you can get through there as well. Um, it's got five Actis, Actis, Axis um, optical image stabilization on the lens as well. Uh, on the camera, sorry, um, and I think that probably isn't without the lens on. So if you put a lens on that's stabilised, it should be even better. Uh, that's that's nice. So uh, one of the things I found with the A6400 was the lack of the stabilisation sometimes caused an issue, and I often use stabilised lenses which helped uh, with that. So you know I could sort of more hand hold it. Um, I mean I'm actually very very good at hand holding uh, cameras anyway. But it, it is really good that they've added this optical image stabilisation into this, uh, which is your 5-axis. I've heard it's not as good as, say, some of the ones out there like the Panasonic and also the um, Olympus. But still, it's uh, really quite good. And if, like I said, if you added it with a stabilised lens, like the, uh, you know, the t 11 to... Uh, the 10 to 18 or whatever it is. Uh, I think it's the 10 to 18. Um it would be fantastic with that stabilised as well if you wanted to do handheld vlogging and things like that. Um, just coming down here, it looks like they, there's all of these compressions now in it. You've got, for JPEG, you've got extra fine, fine, standard and light. 
um, raw files, you've got lossless compression and compressed file through here. You've also got the HEIF if you want to go with that as well. The AI part to this though is really interesting because if you have any questions, far away guys, because I will come back to uh, you know a Q and A at the end uh, if you want to ask any questions. Um, the innovative AI processing is getting really good in these cameras. It's it's actually uh, pretty amazing now what they're doing. So it does have this chip on there, which is the AI processing unit. And it's saying basically that it's got this human pose estimation. Now it's just saying here that the A6700 uses subject uh, from data to recognize movement. So they have millions of images probably put in and then it recognizes that as all part of this chip. Um, and if you turn away, for instance, it will then go from the face to the back uh, and things like that, so it will keep tracking. Whereas the previous sort of versions of these cameras would sort of just go onto wide area or something like that uh, if you turned around. So the tracking's really good. It will sort of go from the face if it can see it. If it can't, it will then go down to other parts of the body and keep tracking through that as well uh, if you're facing away from the, the uh, camera, which is great, really. Like, I, I mean, I do handheld or even gimbal walking with brides walking away. So um, following down the aisle and things like that is great that I'm, it's gonna be able to track that subject right in the middle. So, you know, that that's fantastic. But it also has this wider subject recognition as well now. It's got animals, birds, planes, cars, trains, and also insects. So uh, that's also a really nice feature now too that's, that's coming into this. Um, with the real-time AF now, the, the autofocus really, and I've talked about this before, is fantastic in all of these cameras. Um, but they are adding more features into AI now where it will track that subject and lock onto it uh, effectively. So, you know, like with your eye, uh, with your birds, it'll, it'll grab the eye of the bird animals, it'll grab the eye of the animals as well. So it's really great. It's also saying down here too that it's uh, got smarter real-time tracking. I'm just seeing what it says here. Oh, it's using the AI, uh, real-time tracking, making shooting a wider range of subjects simpler, uh, leaving you free to concentrate on framing and composition. See, this is the great thing about the way that you can shoot with this type of camera, um, is that you don't have to worry so much about having to focus on them reframe and stuff. All you have to do is lock onto your subject and then you can move that frame around to sort of suit what you want to actually get. And that's terrific because you really have to trust the camera and that's what I do now uh, with the, you know, the A7S III and the A9, I do trust the camera to get the right thing. And nearly all the time it does do the right thing and it's getting better and better now at doing that. So basically you're just gonna lock on your subject and then basically you can then just worry about framing it and stuff like that. Uh, which is a terrific thing to do. It will also, in video, follow you around the frame as well. It crops in uh, into the frame and then it will actually track you around the frame so it looks like you're on a, uh, a gimbal or something like that, which is terrific, actually. Um, let's see what else. It's got many more um, AF areas now. It's got 759 phase detection points covering 93% of the shooting stills. You can see here that if you look at that image there, that you can see how much of the frame it's actually covering. That is pretty amazing. Uh, I think it's nearly double what the previous A6, uh, the A6600 was, um, which is unbelievable. So the autofocus I'm sure on this camera is gonna be incredible. Um, the low light AF, you can sort of see here, if it's working at minus three is really good. Uh, they're also saying here that to, um, I'll just have a drink, that the AF performance light levels of the work is uh, low as EV minus three at ISO 100. Um, uh, and in uh, AFS mode, it'll work, um, a, oh, that's in AFS mode. Oh, okay, I thought it was saying it was AFC. Obviously, the wider your aperture is, uh, the better the autofocus will work if you're dealing with, um, you know, dark images like that. Um, the shoot, uh, you can do 1,000 images at 11 frames per um, second. That's JPEG. Uh, you can also do 59 compressed raw images or up to 23 lost compressed images. So it's pretty good. I mean, it's not A1 or A9, but, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Um... It's also got full frame DMF, 
um, which means you can focus as well, which I often I do use that uh, sometimes. Focus bracketing to capture the best shot as well, it will do. Uh, it's also got flicker uh, suppression that you can see here too, that um, you can turn that um, on as well, which is great if you're getting flickering. So that's the still side of it. Let's look at the video side now. Like I said, it will do 4K 120, um, but it's with a fair crop, I think, and the, and the quality does suffer a little bit. Uh, but 4K 60 at 10 bit is fantastic. Uh, that is really good. Uh, so they've really lifted their game there. You're going to have much more uh, ability to say color correct and things like that, uh, which is great. You know, it, you've got much more dynamic range that you can say uh, stop venetting in skies and things like that, which is where you used to have issues if it's 8 bit particularly. Uh, so you'll have much more ability to grade the footage. So, you know, you know that's that's a terrific aspect about this as well. Uh, high frame rate of 4K 120 uh, recording um, is that it's not time limited, but I do believe it overheats uh, if you're using it. But I wouldn't pay any attention to anything with overheating with 4K 120 because anyone that's shooting 4K 120, um, you're going to be only shooting for a few seconds anyway. Remember, the reason why you do that usually is to slow it down. Uh, so, you know, if you're dealing with having uh, two um, ten seconds of footage, that's a lot of footage if you're shooting at 4K 120 and you're starting to slow it down. So whenever I'm shooting with, you know, that sort of uh, frame rate, I'm shooting only for a few seconds anyway. Uh, even if I'm shooting 4K 60, I do the same thing. You know, like most of my shoots are, say, 15 seconds. Like, I'm not shooting for very, very long at all. So I wouldn't worry about the overheating uh, in this camera really particularly much at all. It does have an S, uh, expressive S cine tone, which is nice. It's got uh, all the log profiles, and it does say there that it's 14 stops of latitude. Like I said, I think the actual true working range, um, I think Gerald Undone discussed that, was saying that the really the effective is around about 11, nearly 12, I think, which is great. Anyway, I mean, that's, that's good as well. Real-time tracking for movies too, which is a really nice feature. Um, you've got the active movie for enhanced image stabilization as well. Um, what they're saying that is there provides powerful image stabilization for handheld shooting. Yeah, so it's using the electronic stabilization, and that does work very, very well. Um, I think that's probably more the future, to be honest, about the way that these are going uh, to go. It's got the breathing compensation for consistent angle of view, so you're not going to get that breathing when you... Um, yeah, I can see that having issues with the uh, focus there. I'll definitely have to manual focus next week. The A7S is usually pretty good. Um, but it, it, what focus breathing is, if you uh, focus on something and then you use the zoom to zoom in or out, uh, the frame actually changes and it causes issues. So uh, focus breathing is uh, does have that compensation there. The only issue is it will crop in a little bit. But being the 6K uh, resolution on that sensor, it's not going to be a problem at all. You can bring imported LUTs into there as well. And you've also got this simple way of making movies, which, like I said, was for the ability of people to uh, shoot quickly, which, like I said, you will get beginners uh, buying this sort of camera as well. Uh, the ergonomics look nice. Um, I think the ergonomics actually look really uh, nice with the, the fact that the now that this is using, obviously, the Z battery like the A6600, uh, the actual grip on it is much larger, so it's going to be much easier to hold than the previous cameras, particularly if you put a larger lens on there. So, you know, you know that's an interesting thing as well. So I think that's really, really good. Um, the EVF is a 2.6 million dot. Yeah, meh. I mean, look at the price range, I suppose, that you're paying for this. Uh, I think that at least it's got the EVF on there. Uh, the A6400 that I had, I did miss the EVF. In Australia particularly, where you know it's very, very bright and lots of sun and it's very harsh, it's hard sometimes to see using uh, uh, the back screen. So having an EVF is useful. Uh, so I'm just glad that's there, even though it's, it's not um, very uh, good. The back screen though, Sony, for God's sake, the A6700 has a large 3 inch screen, 1.3 million dot touch panel. Hang on, hang on. What? What's this anyway? What's Glackenspiel? Oh. <laughs> um, 
I'm gonna give a bicycle. What on <laughs> earth? What are you doing, Sony? Like, honestly, you make amazing photos. I thought the days where we were gonna have these crap screens were gone. <sighs> a 1.3 million dot screen. They must have a factory where these have box loads of these things in there that, you know, that they're just thinking, how on earth can we get rid of these monitors? I thought the days that where we had that were completely gone, and, and obviously it's not. I thought that we wouldn't actually see these crappy screens again, but it's appeared. That's a real downer, actually, on this. Uh, that is a downer for me. It's a real downer, and I think they shouldn't have done that, but anyway, it's there. Um, the screen itself, you have a lot of extra features now. It is more uh, full touch screen than what it was before, even though it's so crappy you can hardly uh, see what's on it. Um, also, the menus and stuff have been improved, obviously, as well. So that's that's one good side as well. Um, Body-wise, if we look here, you can just see it's very... It's it's sort of a mix, really, now between the A6600 uh, and the FX3. Um, there's, you know, new controls. I do like the fact that you've got on the front a new control here, which you can use, obviously, for your exposure or um, your f-stop, because you've also got one on the back as well. So that's fantastic, because you always used to have to play through this, you know, scroll wheel here or whatever to adjust exposure. So having now the full range of having these two... Um, different uh, controllers now, wheels, it is brilliant. And I think so that's a great move by Sony uh, to do that. The Just to go back to, the screen is fully articulating, so it is uh, the articulating screen, but it's not the new one like you see in the A7R4, um, which is a little pity, but I suppose at the price you, you can't sort of expect that. Uh, layout, I think, is nice. They've moved the shutter button and things like that. It's now on the top. Um, the record button, you've got a new programmable button on the side here, which is quite nice. But I think the ergonomics are, are really nice. Your menu button's through here, your recording's up the top, so it's sort of separate. It used to be on the side through here. So that's that's nice as well. I think the body design is, is pretty good. I'm a little bit disappointed in a way that they haven't made the body slightly larger um, due to the fact of putting that crappy um, micro HDMI in there. I hate them. I really hate them. They're prone to breaking. I thought I put that on quiet. Um, oh no. Um, let me just put this up because Long Rider gave me donation. I'll put this up. How come that doesn't show? Do I have to go back to here? Me. There we go. Let me bring up. I think this works. <laughs> so Long Rider said, well, well, Osler is on duty. Thanks so much, mate. Really appreciate that donation. It might go towards paying for the $360 I've lost on Facebook um, through the scammer hacking me. <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. I don't know whether I'm going to get that back. But thanks thanks so much, Long Rider. Really do appreciate that. Um, how come I can't show it there? Oh, it does. It came up now. Okay. Um, so the body itself, like I said, looks really good. As, uh, apart from, I think they should have gone a little bit bigger. They could have then put in a full-size HDMI port. The days of having these micro uh, HDMI should be over. They are really prone to breaking, and if they break inside the camera, then you've got to send it away and you're screwed, really, until you get it back. But And they fall out, like they're really unreliable. So it's, it's I wish they had basically made the body slightly larger. They probably wouldn't have had to have gone much larger to do that. Uh, the body itself actually is larger already, but I, I think they probably should have gone a little bit further uh, with it. Um, do they say anything else? Um, the ISO goes from 100 to 3200. Uh, it's expandable up to 102,400 as well. Um, it does have a mechanical and electronic shutter. Uh, oh, let me go to full specifications here. Hang on. And just see what else they sort of talk about through here. Uh, number of uh, pixels is, is, well, 27 they're saying. Um, what else? Movies approximately 19.9 megapixels. Um, 
anti-dust system. That must mean that it closes probably. The shutter closes across it. 14-bit um, raw, yes. Uh, I'm just trying to see too anything else that comes up. Like I said, it was 10-bit now, which is great. 442 10-bit, which was fantastic. Um, not worried about that. Oh, the one memory card slot. Oh. Again, I think if they... I don't know whether Sony has said... And I'd love to know your opinion about this in the chat. I don't know whether Sony have said... We have to keep this price down as well, so we're going to have to keep it smaller. Therefore, we'll put a micro HDMI. We'll put that crappy screen on the back. Um, we'll also put in one card slot. I think it's a shame that they've done that. I mean, I know I've saw online where people said that they've never had a card being corrupted. Well, it's happened to me twice on paying jobs, so I know it happens. Um, so if you are on a world trip or something like that, you could lose your images if you're doing a paid job with this. And it is good enough to be used for a paid job, definitely. I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't do this with client work. Um, having one card slot is... I think they should have tried to put two in. But anyway, I'd love to know your opinion about that. But, you know, it's interesting anyway. Um, what else have they got? The autofocus, I think, is going to be amazing. I think that's that's actually going to be terrific. Um, I mentioned what the ISO was before. The viewfinder is meh. Uh, the back rear screen is just crap. I don't know why on earth they put that screen on. Um, the shutter, there is mechanical and electronic shutter. But the interesting thing is here, uh, I don't understand really the way that they've done this because the flash, uh, the flash sync speed is only 160th per second, which is pretty poor. Um... Now, is that mechanical and electronic? It must be. Let's say it's got an asterisk. Where's the... I'll have to see if I can find where that is later. It may... It's probably just mechanical. But that's not very good. That's not a very good flash uh, sync speed there. I'm surprised that they didn't make this just an electronic um, shutter. I'm surprised that the sensor wasn't fast enough to do that. Um, it may have been Jared Poland. I'm not sure, but... Uh, Someone I saw where they took a photo of a baseball bat and it was bent like, <laughs> it was bent terribly. So the rolling shutter, if you're trying to do sports on this, is awful. Uh, now you get the same amount of shots if you're doing mechanical or electronic. So I really don't understand why the electronic's there if it has rolling shutter issues. Perhaps it's something that you can do if, if there's not much movement involved. Well, you could shoot electronic and then save your shutter because there's no moving parts. But, you know, that, that's, that's an interesting perspective anyway. Flash sync speed is, is not good at all. Um, so you've got five stops of the um, image stabilization, which is, which is nice. Uh, is there anything else that's uh, coming up? Like I said, there was only one card, which is is a problem for me. It may not be for you, but it definitely is for me. It does have a headphone and microphone uh, input and you know and headphone output, so that's great as well. Uh, that's nice. It's got Bluetooth uh, 4.2 as well, and also it's Wi-Fi compatible. It's 2.4 gigahertz and also the 5 gigahertz band, so that's nice as well. Um... Checking down here. It, oh, USB streaming looked like it worked very, very well. You can stream up to here, which was um, 4K 30p. So that's really good. Um, will it let you do 4K 25? Yes, it will. Uh, you can also do 4K 25p as well. So that's great. So if you wanted to get rid of um, hardware and you want to stream, uh, stream directly from your camera with a USB-C cable, you can do it up to 4K 30 uh, if you're in the US and that's brilliant and from what I've seen the results look outstanding so that is terrific built-in microphone again built-in speaker uh, as well um, it does have that uh, focus breathing as well um, it's also got shading and chromatic aberration as well and it's got that focus breathing in movie like I said the battery is the, the you know the Z battery the typical one there it's saying that you get 550 shots 
uh, with the viewfinder, approximately 470 shots with the LCD. You get, you'll get way more than that. I always find that it's way underestimated uh, with that timeline as well. What's it saying you get through movie uh, time? Actual recording is 95 minutes, so that's pretty good. Remember, because this has USB-C charging as well, though, that you will get much more time than that because you could put a battery bank in uh, and you'd probably get, you know, almost permanent recording from that. So oh, it does say there, um, battery life, continue. Oh, no, that's continuous recording. Um, so that's good. Um, dimensions are here, but like I said, it is a little bit bigger than... Um, what your uh, previous A6600 was. Remember too, the operating temperature, they do give you that. So if you're dealing with this in direct sunlight, and or not even direct sunlight, if it's over 105, uh, they're saying that it is outside of the temperature scope and it will overheat. But I don't think you're going to have an issue with this with overheating if you use it. You know, you don't just leave it in, in full sun on a, a boiling hot day and you just leave it recording permanently. Um, if you do do that, well, then you'd be better off to get a different camera with uh, thermal properties that will help that as well. Um, so that's it. So this gets the focus breathing um, there as well, which is great. Uh, the interesting thing is here that... Um, where's my mouse gone over? It's over here. Um, I think it's terrific. I, I think it's a great release. Uh, the price is, is definitely competitive. Um, I think there's a few issues with it. Like I said, the rear screen is just awful. Uh, the EVF is not great, but it, at least it's there, and I think that's good that Sony put that in there. Uh, the one card slot is an issue, and also the micro HDMI. So yes, it's not perfect, but for the price, I think it's pretty good. Um, I'd buy it, probably. Um, but again, I would wait and see what comes out before I bought anything. I, like I said in my other video I'm not buying anything now that is the top of the range for that thing with Sony because of what they've done with the firmware on other cameras because something's liable to come out that you know that will be much better than this in a, in a couple of months who knows I mean if you look at you know what have we still got with the Sony A1 and the uh, A7S 3 you ready for this this is what Sony have given us for the Sony A1 and the a7S3 with firmware updates. <laughs> That's what we've got, isn't it? It's zilch. Thanks, Sony. Thanks so much. Really appreciate what you've done for us. All right, let's look at the second one and then I'll come back and go to the chat uh, here because I want to just talk about this quickly. This also looks really nice. Uh, a new um, 70-200 f4 macro has come out. Um, if I just click through the screen, oh, I've got to change the thing over here. Uh, let me go there. Uh, yeah, new 70-200 has, has um, been released. Why isn't that show? Oh, it was just... Um, taking its time. Looks really small actually, great. This would be a terrific lens also to put on uh, the a6700. It would be a great lens to put on that with the reach. Uh, you're gonna get great reach out of this. Looks like it's a really sharp lens. It is a, a G model, so it's not a G Master, but it is the version two of this. Uh, and like I said, it's really nice and compact and small. Um, but I, fa I got the A7, um, the 70 to 200 f4 that I have is, I was really happy with that too, but they've really stepped up now with what they're giving you with these. Also, it's got great macro ability as well, and I'll just show you a couple of images as we look through these. The rendering is superb. In a lot of ways, um, sometimes you just don't need the G Master lens anymore because these lenses, these G, new G lenses are absolutely amazing. Um, you can sort of see the macro performance and stuff that you're going to start getting off this. You can see here how small this is. This is on probably the A6700. Uh, it's tiny. Uh, that is really nice. Like I said, it would be a great travel lens to take with you. And look at when the guy is holding it here, um, how small that is. Um, the charts, I mean, I'll leave these links down below so you can have a look. Charts look great. Uh, I think they look really good. Um, it, there's a whole rundown of all your buttons on through this, so it's fully controllable and programmable. Uh, I usually use this button for, for the eye autofocus, but there's a stack of 
uh, like I said, controls that you can uh, add through this, which is focus holding, and uh, you can also have steady shots and all that sort of stuff that you can turn on. So there's stacks of different controls available. You can also lock the lens too, so because it will come out. It is a barrel lens, so that will come out. But you know, it looks like it's really terrific. Um, I think I probably would get this over the 70 to 200 GM um, because I love the size and weight of this thing. Uh, it's, like I said, it's tiny. And to put this on a gimbal, if you wanted to use this on a gimbal, uh, to travel with this with the A6600 or even if you have an A7R camera, F4 nowadays is no issue with ISO like it used to be. Look, years ago, yes, it used to be uh, an issue because the second you went into any low light, you had problems. Well, you don't have that anymore because... Uh, the uh, ISO is so good on these cameras that having an f4 lens is not a problem. You just pump the ISO up. So that's that. I, I think that's a great release. I really do think that's a great release. Both of these products are probably going to be about $20,000 Australian, um, but <laughs> you know what they are if you're in the US. So let's go through the chat anyway before we finish and I'll go and get a coffee. Uh, let's see where we were. So if you have any other questions, guys, fire away. Uh, where were we? Down here, I think. There we were. Um, I can hear the AC, but sounds like a waterfall far away, yeah. I, I mean, I can use a noise reduction. Let me know if it bothers you. I mean, if it does bother you, I can go through a different... Um, part of the audio that I've got down here and I can uh, you know, put a noise gate on it. But the noise gates sometimes sound a bit iffy because they, they cut in and out and sometimes I think it sounds worse than if you just leave a, a little bit of background noise there. Love it too, guys, if you could share the video as well. It does help. Remember, I am uh, totally unsponsored, so it does get me uh, my channel out there. So love it if you could do that. Um, the Happy Clam said... Um, the A600 dramatically reduced the price of the rest of the A6000 lineup. Yeah, they will. I think they'll probably still sell well, though, uh, but they will reduce. And you'll also get some great secondhand um, ones of these because people will obviously want to uh, sell those to get um, the A6700. It's a big jump up from the A6400. Uh, so I think, you know, from that, the A6600, it's still a jump from that, but it's, you know, it's obviously a much bigger jump from the A6400, but I think it, I think it'll sell very, very well. Um, Trevor said, same sensor, yeah, it is the, as the FX30, which is a great camera as well. Uh, the AI will just continue to get better since... The uh, dB of images just keeps getting longer. It does. Yes, it certainly does. It's making um, single-person jobs much easier to do. This is the great thing now about these cameras is the fusion aspect of it is amazing. You know, being having that ability where you can shoot stills and video from the same camera is a really big bonus, particularly when they start matching all the profiles and things like that. You know, I really do think that's, that's a, a really nice feature. Uh, Trev said, if I was getting into the industry, this is the type of camera I'd be looking at, as opposed to a big body and big lenses. It's brilliant. Um, thank you so much, Long Rider, for the donation too. Really do appreciate that. Like I said, it might go towards paying my $360 hack that I've been hacked in Facebook. I have put a new account up for people that have popped in late though. So David Osler now on Facebook is me. But in the photography videography school, it's still owned by Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> I can't fix it. I'm going to talk about that probably in another video. Um, oh, they're just talking to each other. Ike's there as well. G'day, Ike. How are you, buddy? Uh, nice to see you here. Uh, Trev said, at this um, point, one, could, one card slot absolutely makes no sense at all. I know, I really think they should have put that in there. Oh, I don't understand that. Sometimes cutting the costs, you know, it's not going to add, that sort of thing would not add much expense. It probably, like I said, it may have had to have had a slightly larger body than what it was uh, already on there. But I think the two big factors for me, there's three really for me with this, the micro HDMI I hate. Uh, the screen is just absolute crap, and the um, one card slot is a downer. But look, the, those three things apart from that, the camera is amazing. So, 
you know, if you're in the market for this camera, I still would buy it with those things, but I'm just saying there are flaws with it that I'm telling you about. Um, Vintage Vin, remember, I'm not, I haven't been sent this camera, so I'm not going to give you all the gloating features about this because I'm not paid to do that or I'm not a sponsored, um, you know, having a sponsored video for this. Yeah, long time. It has been a long time. I think it's been about five or six weeks since I've been on. Uh, I've been extremely busy, actually. I've been doing weddings and things like that, which I mentioned before is unusual for this time of year because usually I'm uh, quiet this time of year. I should be back again by next Saturday. I'll try and do back to Saturdays again. Um, Julian says, uh, Sony needs to stop. I buy a camera thinking I'm good for a couple of months, make a purchase, then a month later they come out with a feature they should have put in the original. Yeah, and that's right, that's the way they're working now. Um, you either have to go with it or not. And I've talked to you about that with a big video I put out about the updates for the A7S III and the A1, um, where I discussed that and saying I won't buy another top tier camera again. Um, I'll wait for the others to, to trickle down. Um, but, yeah, it, it is an issue, I agree. And that's it, it looks like we've actually caught up. So thank you so much everyone for joining me again today. Like, like, I, did, like I said, I didn't even promote this one on Facebook or anything because of that hack that's been happening. Um, I didn't put it on there. I can't do it yet in the photography school. I have to get Kerry to post it, she's still an admin. I'll have to get her to add me. Um, but if you do see Robert Downer Jr. in <laughs> Facebook who's an admin, uh, it's not me. Um, I'm not sure whether he comes up as uh, himself, this Robert Downey Jr., or if it shows up as me in there. I, I don't know. Um, but I might get Kerry to add me. Luckily, I put Kerry in as an admin. So I might get Kerry to add me back in as an admin uh, fairly soon. Um, yeah, that pulsing is annoying me. I don't know why that's doing that. So I've got it on center focus, and it's grabbing my eye. So it shouldn't be... It is on 1.4. Um, but I thought it was better than that, the A7S III. Hmm, I have to look into that. I may have it on, uh, the transition may be too fast, but I noticed it's not grabbing focus here. There's something wonky going on. I'm going to have to work it out because it should grab my hand now. See, it's not focusing at all. Oh, hang on, yeah, because I've got it on centre focus. Okay. The centre focus, actually, I've put it down about here. Um, perhaps I should have put it up to the head, but I wonder if that's what, yeah, that's why it's doing it. Look, I've worked it out. Okay. It's because it's there, not on my face. I probably should just use eye detect or have it that uh, point where it's got the focus point directly over my head. I think that's why I'm moving. See, the second I move... Uh, it's uh, doing that focus sort of racking, going in and out. Uh, oh, well, it is what it is, I suppose. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for following today. Like I said, if you can, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up, um, like and share, uh, and I'll see you all in the next video. So great to be back, guys, and hope everyone's well and enjoying the sun in the US. I know it's hot, but I love the heat, so I'm jealous. <laughs> Catch you in the next video, everyone. Bye for now.